Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.0.1 to the public. iOS 17.0.1 released around the world at the same time and is available for all the same supported devices as iOS 17 with the iPhone 10R all the way up to the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max models. Now this update released alongside iOS 17.0.2 for iPhone 15 models along with iPadOS 17.0.1 and watchOS 10.0.1. There's also other updates such as iOS 16.7 that are out as well. This update released at 430.2 megabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro Max. It was about the same size on the other devices here as well. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 20A340. And Apple did not release a modem update with this as well. It's the same modem as iOS 17. Now, if you're a beta tester and you're not seeing this update, all you need to do is go back to your software update. Under software updates, make sure that you have beta updates turned off and you'll actually see this show up. The same is true on the watch. Now let's take a look at what's new. And as far as what's new, if we take a look at the screenshot I had when I installed this, it says this update provides bug fixes and important security updates for iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro models. So it's a little odd since Apple released iOS 17.0.2 as well, and those were specifically for iPhone 15 models. So they really haven't said anything specific as far as what's new in this update. So far, there's no journal app that should be with iOS 17.1, and maybe there's fixes for things such as airdrop. So the journal app is coming later. You can actually see that here on their iOS 17 webpage. So it says coming later this year and it's a little stuttery for some reason but it says coming later this year, maybe with iOS 17.1, 17.2. It's possible they fixed issues with AirDrop as well. So I did notice if I go into my photos and maybe we AirDrop this particular one. So we'll just send this over to the iPad, give it a second here. And it seemed to be pretty quick this time. So maybe they've fixed some issues there. They may have also fixed some issues with iMessage as I've seen that with specific carriers. And maybe there's some other bugs we just don't know about, but Apple has not specified exactly what they're actually fixing in this update. Now, Apple Apple also updated this past week our iCloud storage settings. So if we go to settings, tap on our name at the top, and I noticed after rebooting this, my picture had changed here and it's no longer centered. Under manage account storage, if we tap on change storage plan, give it a moment to load, you'll see that we have some options here, all the way up to 12 terabytes. Apple announced this last week and now it's available. So we have $29.99 per month on top of what we already have with iCloud Plus with maybe your Apple One plan. So you can go up to a total of 12 terabytes plus whatever you have. So if you have the two terabyte plan, of course you'll have 14 terabytes. So that's a ton of storage. At least it's available, but it's a bit expensive. Now, as far as anything else, well, if we go into the app store and Apple updated their iWork suite of apps, if you go to see all, you can see them here, numbers, pages, and keynote, basically an equivalent, depending on the app, I would say keynote is better than PowerPoint, but pages and numbers aren't as good as word and Excel, but it depends what you use. These are updated now. And if we go into these, you'll see that they added some support for different things, such as documents with 3d objects. If we scroll down, you'll see it remove external borders on charts imported from Microsoft office files and more. You will need iOS 17 or newer in order to update to this version though. So a few different things with inline predictions for text as you type in more, which is odd as that's part of iOS 17, but it needs this app for that to be supported. So maybe third-party app developers need that as well. As far as the release notes, there really aren't any release notes. In fact, you don't see anything here where it says learn about what's new, but there are some security updates. So if we go to Apple's security website, that was a little bit stuttery there, scroll down, you'll see that we have iOS 17.0.1 and iPadOS 17.0.1. Here you'll see that we have three security updates, one for the kernel, one for security, and one for WebKit, the underlying code that goes with Safari. For example, the impact was processing web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited against versions of iOS before iOS 16.7. The issue was addressed with improved checks, and then you'll see here more information about who submitted the issue. So these are definitely very important things to patch that we needed patched with iOS 16 and iOS 17 as well. And iOS 16.7 does the same sort of thing. As far as any other additional fixes, well, that notification bug is still here, as you can see. So they haven't fixed that. 
maybe they fixed some smoothness, but you did see the stutter throughout. So what the, what it is specifically could definitely be just for iPhone 15 and just security updates for everyone else. As far as performance, other than that stuttering I mentioned before, it's quite fast. And I've also noticed that it's quite cool to the touch after processing the update initially. So that's a good sign. Seems to be doing well there. Also, if we take a look at battery, one thing worth mentioning is iPhone 15 models get battery information. They get more battery information and the ability to actually limit the charging of their battery to 80%. So if that's something you want to do and not manage, but only charge it to 80% to prolong the battery health, you can do that. You'll see I'm already down to 87%. So it's not great here. And they're also giving the cycle count under the about settings. We're not seeing that with iOS 17 on any other devices other than iPhone 15. If we take a look at the last 10 days here, we'll look at yesterday running iOS 17, the public version. I had three hours and 35 minutes of screen active time, three hours of idle time. I actually completely reset all settings, but I didn't wipe the device. It seems to be getting a little bit better. You'll see here today, two hours and 27 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 26 minutes of screen idle time, and I've used 50% of my battery. Believe it or not, that's actually quite a bit better. So that's good to see. Hopefully we'll see this improve again with iOS 17.0.1. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.0.1, if you're on iOS 17, well then definitely just for those security updates, that's an important reason to do it. I don't really see any difference here as it's just a minor update. The odd thing is they probably could have pushed it as a rapid security response, but for some reason they didn't. As far as iOS 17.1, we thought the betas would be out already with beta one. Last year, iOS 16 released, and then two days later, we had iOS 16.1 beta one. Since iPhone 15 and 15 Pro models come out tomorrow along with the Apple watches, I would expect Apple probably is going to push the betas until next week. Maybe they won't, but that seems more likely to me. As far as Mac OS 14 Sonoma, that comes out on the 26th. We have a new beta for that as well, or an RC2 rather. So we'll see that in a little bit, you know, a couple days or so next week. So that's great. We'll have lots of updates, lots to look forward to. And I did run benchmarks quickly on this update as well. And with benchmarks, you'll see iOS 17.0.1 on the right, iOS 17 on the left. And I took both of the scores from the same device. I just airdropped the results to make it easier to compare. And we've improved a little bit on one of the numbers. So for single core, we have 2,634 compared to 2,641. However, with multi-core, that's improved quite a bit to 6,691 compared to 6,398. So a bit of an improvement there with multi-core processing. That's great to see. Not really any changes. And like I said before, this is a minor update. I would expect very little changes, maybe a few bug fixes they didn't mention. I wish they would, but those security updates as well. If you found anything else in iOS 17.0.1, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And also if you're picking up an iPhone 15, I'd love to hear which version you're getting. Is it a pro, a plus, what color? I'd love to hear from you there as well. Well, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.